2022 is coming to a close. So today, myself and James are gonna do our annual year in review, and this video is gonna focus on cameras. It's been an incredibly busy year for camera releases. There's been so much going on. And we started out the year really, really strongly. So we had the we Canon R5C to start off with now. R5C was very different to some things we haven't seen before, really. It was a really a cinema hybrid, something kind of fairly new to Canon. Really. Yeah, it was. It's, it fitted into their cinema lineup. Um, so obviously the R5, fantastic video capabilities, yeah. but there were some things on it that weren't as great if you shot professional video as your only thing, really. So the R5C came in, you could do 8K 60p internal, which was madness. You could do um, 4K 120, of course. You had great bit rates, loads of control over what you were able to produce, but also it had a big, big fan. So you could shoot for a really long time. Which is very important. I must say, I've used it several times over the, this very hot summer and the R5 yeah. definitely yeah. overheated. So having a fan built in definitely makes it that kind of cinema step up, which is what a lot of people were looking forward to with the R5C. Next up, still very early on in the year, I got to meet my favourite ever on-screen companion. Oh, Sorry. Yes, I remember. It's not you. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, fantastic shoot with the brand new Olympus. Well, the last ever Olympus. OM system. OM OM one. system. Well, that was the last ever Olympus. It actually had Olympus on the body. Oh, did it? Yeah, so it was an OM, it was an Olympus OM Systems one, if okay. you like. Yeah, so nice long name. Yeah, there. so I know why we, they've changed it then. We went all out because obviously it was the last Olympus we were gonna see. So it's really interesting to have a look at. It had that 20 megapixel VSI sensor. We had uh, 120 frames per second stills. If you did some jiggery pokery, you could get incredible continuous frame rates from it. But yeah, I think during that shoot, I got one of my favorite shots that have yes. ever happened to me. Well, this is the best day ever. However, this I did have a real problem with uh, Sean who shot that because he didn't tell me what my hair looked like. Let's oh, zoom in yes. on that. Yes. Let's zoom in. What parting is that? That's not awful, awful. Ruined my favorite ever thing. So James knows now, he has to let yeah, me know. I yeah. always do now. Yeah, it's constant. Now it wasn't just brand new systems coming in. So like the OM1, for example, that was kind of new. There wasn't necessarily a predecessor to that other than its film predecessor. Yeah. But in February, George took on the new GH6, which obviously we know the predecessor to that, the GH5, incredibly popular, has been for years. And so the GH6 was really exciting. Yes. But out of all of the specs it had, George, the thing he was most impressed with was how rugged it was. We went up to shoot on the Isle of Skye with the GH6 and the weather was horrendous. And not one point did it falter. Now, it was quite interesting because it got released technically in 2021, but we weren't able to get hold of it mm. until 2022. So you had a kind of good time of year to really test out its kind of weatherproofing. Absolutely. Um, and obviously we had the, the GH5 Mark II, so it was that kind of interim. Uh, th it came up with quite a few specs that a lot of people weren't necessarily expecting. Yeah. So if you're after a kind of a micro four thirds camera that's kind of really good in low light, the GH6 for video really did stand out versus it did. others. And that's actually something that's really important to mention because we're in a bit of an unusual situation now, you know, over the past few years, uh, things, samples, they've been, we've been getting them later just due to everything that happened, you know, COVID, there was so much going on in the world. And so quite often, you know, if you got things coming out in December, November, the year before, we used to just get the kit straight away. Whereas sometimes now we're not that lucky. So, yeah. you know, things overlap, but I'm sure you guys don't mind. GH6 was, was good enough to feature in however yeah. many years we want to feature. In. Uh, lovely location, Scotland. Still haven't gone. We'll be definitely, hopefully I'll be going there in the next few months with the yeah. channel. But I must say one of those few, because obviously these are videos that I wasn't part of because I didn't join until June. So watching all of these things, that's what I was really excited about when Making the him jealous. Yeah, definitely. Trying to reel him in. <laughs> We've got him now. Now, a lot of the cameras that come out nowadays, especially this year, are mainly hybrids. Yeah, in fact, most mirrorless cameras these days can shoot both photo and video. It's kind of yeah. one of their main features. They say, they say the photography specs, then they say the video mm. specs. So and they can do it very well. Very, very it's, well, It's a yes. main feature, but 
I tried a camera that was a little bit different earlier in the year. You so did. I went to the Isle of Wight with George with the Hasselblad 907X. Now this was a small, medium format, travel friendly medium format camera. Very different to something like the GFXs from Fuji. It had that original vintage style. You had to learn to get to use a box. Very different looking camera Very versus different, others. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I'm not going to hide it. I mean, I'm not super versed in that style of camera. Absolutely not. I mean, we, we use a lot of cameras here, but you can only use so many in your life um so yeah it, it took me a while to get used to it as a different a different beast it was, to play with i think i think how you said it was very good at what it does it just was very specific of what it does it was very a unique style of camera yeah. i think you have to be kind of you have to use it a lot to really fully utilize it, its features it's not one of those things you can just pick up and go it's certainly not a beginner camera i can guarantee no. you that and it, it was very like to slow you down it was, it was made to just slow you down make you take the shot seriously yeah. and and just wait and sometimes when you're reviewing for four or five hours and that's all you get you don't have the time it feels a bit yeah you're trying to rush something that just can't be rushed yeah and, i mean i'd love to see that in the hands of someone maybe who shoots with the 500c you know film hasselblads and can use that can stick that on as a digital back you know I think there's so many good uses for that camera, but it was definitely a harder review it's for a, me. It do. was more of the experience of taking the photo. It's like, yeah, absolutely. It's not like instant coffee where you go ahead and make it, stir it, and you're done. It's, it's one of those, it's, it's the process Take of grinding time. the beans and things like that. It's absolutely. all about the, the experience of using it instead of necessarily the taking a photo and then yeah. moving on. And I think that's nice. Absolutely. But it was really interesting to see Hasselblad bring something to the market that was made for, their, their understanding that, okay, your studio shooter that's maybe shooting with maybe not even Hasselblad, but FaZe or whoever in studio might want to go out and, yeah. and take some images, but they might want to stick with their Hasselblad ecosystem, yeah. um, you know, and they're able to do so in, a, in an outside, more portable environment without having to go to something like a GFX. Yeah. Maybe they want to stick with, you know, yeah. someone they know. They've got they a range know. of lenses. Yeah, they've got a range, you know, that. I think that's, yeah. it was an interesting thing for them to do. And yeah, it's it was a more difficult review to me, but they're, there's going to be people out there that that camera really works for, and there's going to be people it yeah. really doesn't work for. I think what I'm what I'm actually most excited about is medium formats becoming more popular. So we're going to hopefully mm. see more cameras like these yeah. in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Now, from a much bigger sensor to a smaller yes. sensor, Canon came at us with an RF mount APS-C camera. In fact, two of them. We got the R10 and the R7 this year. Really enjoyed that review. I went to um, a wildlife sanctuary, basically. Yeah, it was a really good, really good video. I actually really enjoyed that one. Oh, good. Thank you. That's why we employed her. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, it's uh, they were good cameras to to use. The R7 especially was was fantastic. Well, it's been rumoured for years. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's, like the, it's like the R1X whenever that eventually comes out. The R7 was one of those cameras that a lot of people were waiting for. The very first mm. APS-C. RF mount camera. Yeah. So. You don't know when it's going to come. You don't know, because we don't know these things. We, you know, we want things. There's certain things we yeah, think should come, but we never know when it's going to happen. And it was really nice to see the R7 come in and sort of, it wasn't dead on, but it sort of harked back to when people were buying the 7D and a 100 to 400. Yes. You know, it, it had that vibe about it. And it was, it was great to see that coming into the RF ecosystem, which we both love. Um, and yeah, I actually, I was really lucky. We, we didn't, do a video from it, it was something I did separately. Um, but I actually got the R7 for a couple of days and I took it to Scotland. I went um, up into the mountains oh, yes, a bit. Yeah, those Gannet. Uh, yeah, Gannets. the Gannet col yes. colony. And then I went out to Bass Rock. Oh my goodness, it smells so bad. <laughs> if you're thinking of doing that, just, if you've got a weak stomach, just, just don't. Because <laughs> okay. amazing photography opportunities, absolutely. I, I was really lucky I could get a boat out there. Um, the sea was, they said it was calm. <laughs> I'll beg to differ, but the opportunities with the R7, and um, I did push, I did take a 100 to 500. I think realistically, most people are going to be using the R7 with the 100, 400. Oh, yeah, that new RF, RF. one, oh, that yeah. was a very, very good camera. It's a, it's a great lens and camera combo. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I took the 100, 500 just to give me that reach while and, I was and also, out there. You know, the low light, the other one's an F8, that one's a 7.1 at full frame. So, you know, with APS-C, that is one of the big disadvantages. You're getting that extra reach, but you are losing that little bit of light. But Absolutely. I still think the ISO performance of that camera was oh, really, really good. good. Yeah. yeah, really good. And obviously, as people who generally shoot full frame, that's always a worry, you know. Yeah. I love Fuji. I absolutely adore Fuji. And they've managed over the years to get their 
high ISOs under control, yeah. but we weren't sure what was going to come. No, from the, new from sensor, the R7. totally new sensor. Exactly. So. so yeah, it was. It was. We weren't sure what was going to happen with that, but no. yeah, really nice. I mean, you got a chance, even though you went on that shoot. You've obviously played with the yeah. R7 quite a lot, haven't you? Yeah. No, I shot a lot of those photos. If you've seen at the photography show this year, uh, I shot that mostly on with the R7. R7. Mm. Really liked that, and obviously that's in a very difficult lighting situation. You know, you're yeah. shooting with different types of lights, white balance all over the place. So. Shooting in a place with like that, it really did excel, I think, especially with the lenses that they had uh, that came out with it, yeah. which we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. So one of my very first videos I joined on this channel was a brand new flagship Fuji, the Fuji X-H2S. But they didn't just bring out one camera, they no. actually brought out three cameras this year. So you've got the X-H2S, the X-H2, which came a little bit later, yeah. as well as the Fuji X-T5, which is what we'll talk about in a bit. Yeah. Now, I loved, I must say, I'm not a Fuji shooter. It was actually the, pretty much the first time professionally I actually shot on the X-H2 yeah. at all, any Fuji, really. And I was actually really blown away by the quality. Now, it does split into two categories. The X-H2 is uh, more of a photo camera. It still has great video specs. Mm. Like, for instance, we were saying most of these are hybrids these days. But the X-H2S is definitely more video orientated. Yeah. It's got a stacked sensor, so it's a very, very fast readout. So it's great for sport, wildlife, but it's also great for filming. Yeah. So we went to a Goodwood Festival of Speed to test out the X-H2S, and that was a great day out, it I must awesome. say. Fuji yeah. really does treat us on that one. But yeah. the quality of the actual shots, like being able to shoot 1080p, 240 frames per second, pretty much the first camera yeah. I've ever seen that could do that, as well as shooting a 4K 120. It had all the bells and whistles. For someone that's interested in, let's say, video, but they love the Fuji ecosystem, yeah. that camera was Perfect yeah. And there was a, there was a clear definition, right? Because the X-H2S yeah. came first and that was 26.1 megapixels. So it's still a good amount on an APS-C camera. And it was fast oh, and it was blimey. nice to yeah. use. The video was great. Um, but then when we saw the X-H2, obviously you did some testing of that, a wedding and things like that. Yeah. That's, that was 40 megapixels. Now we haven't, we haven't seen that in an APS-C. Highest APS resolution APS-C sensor currently on the market. Yeah, and so. it showed. And we were worried. We were yeah. worried about what that was going to mean because detail's great. But Fuji has always been pretty good. I always love that as an APS-C camera, you can take Fuji into a low light situation and it's all right. You don't have to worry too much. But it actually did really, really yeah. well. And bringing in those bodies like the X-H2S and the X-H2 to give people even more versatility yeah. with those range of lenses. And knowing that your lenses, having the confidence from Fuji as well yeah. to say, all right, we've always had 24, 26 megapixel cameras. I'm now going to give you a 40 megapixel camera and I know my lenses yeah, are good you're enough. You're going to get the resolution from the lens as well yeah. as to really show off. They've been planning kind of, that for a while. Detail. You know, yeah, they they yeah. must know their lenses can, are good you enough. You can see. Yeah. When that 50mm f1 came out, I'm thinking yeah, they're <laughs> going to be releasing a higher resolution camera very Absolutely, shortly. Yeah. And they did. They so. did. They did. Although it was a quieter year for Nikon, we still saw the Z30. So that was more of kind of a vloggy camera. It was still interchangeable lens, which yeah. was great. You still got a lot to work with. Um, so I went up to Greenwich for that, which was really fun. Really like the area. Beautiful for photography. Oh, Greenwich is a really yeah. nice place. If you've never been before, it's a really nice kind of... It's not as busy as like central London, no, but you've not. still got really interesting kind of, that's where the O2 building is. You've mm. got, you know, uh, the uh, Greenwich College. So they've got yeah. loads of places to kind of shoot. It's a very interesting yeah. place. It would have been amazing to go on the chairlift, which oh, was God, yes. the original thing I was meant to do, but then I got a wrong stop. So <laughs> we didn't get to I still haven't been on it all those years you of still, working no. in London. Yeah. No, it's, it's, good. it's quite cool. It's quite yeah. cool. But I have to say, highly recommend the boat, right? The Uber the, boat. The Uber boat yeah. or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. That's so cool. It's so cheap. Yeah, to do. And it's you part of the move. underground. So if you get one of those underground passes, you can also use the boat as well, yeah. as well as the buses and obviously the underground. So. Yeah, if you want to photograph like loads of stuff in a day in London, yeah. great way to do it, just up and down the Thames, yeah. fantastic. But yeah, Z30 was a really fun thing to use. It's nice and small, easy to vlog with. Um, and the fact that you've got those interchangeable lenses, I was just working with one small lens on the day. But if you wanted to, if you were going on holiday or whatever, you could happily take a bunch of different lenses yeah. Obviously, some of the Z lenses are very, very good. good. Yeah, so you could happily take a load of Z lenses with you and have a great time. Yeah, yeah, and I think the microphone, again, is an all-in package. That's what the vlogging camera style yes. needs to be like. It needs to have kind of everything you need. It doesn't have to be great, but it needs to kind of like feel, it needs to be like a Swiss Army knife for cameras. And I yeah. think the microphone really stood out for me. A lot better than the normal inbuilt microphones you get on more expensive cameras. It, it, it sounded really good from, from, sure. from the go. And that's, that's what's important. You, especially if you're beginning you don't want to have to buy loads of accessories no, to, to get to that point so having a camera that has everything built in it might not be great and you can expand on it but at least it's, it's better than nothing absolutely 
Often when I'm working with someone like James or George or Sean, they normally get their hands on the video cameras first, but I was really lucky. I managed to get my hands on the Sony FX30. You did, yes. In the summer. Oh, which... You were able to get that over instead of me. That was, oh, I was, uh, yeah. How did, you, how did you find using it? I loved it. What I loved about the FX30 is that I don't often get a chance to shoot with the FX3, yeah. and it was like a baby FX3. The body's it's almost the body's the same size. Yeah. Unless you look really closely at the text, and you had them side by side, and you didn't take the body cap off. There's no way of knowing the actual no. body size and all the ports and everything is pretty much the same. Mm. If you want to save the money, then you, you can absolutely get it with that. Well, I love it. As it's, as I it, love it with yeah. it. As it's almost half, a lot of my friends that are, oh, I love your FX3, James. Can we use it? Yeah. Like, yeah, let's. You can, if you are, you know, right deal, right time kind of thing, you could technically get two FX30s for the price of one FX3. Yeah, which is madness. Which is, you think, two camera angles and the quality of it. Yeah. You're getting the same quality, I think, that you are with the FX3. But just, just with that smaller sensor. sensor. Yeah, remember that. Like, the FX3 is full frame. FX30, they call it Super 35. So in video, obviously, we talk about Super 35 a lot. Yeah. Super APS 35 and APS-C is very similar. It's about 1.5 times smaller, which means it yeah. will impact your focal length and it will also impact your low light performance. It, it did have really good ISO performance. Again, it's a, yeah, it did. a lower resolution sensor out of most sensors out these days, yeah. but it will offer an impact. There will be a difference in your depth of field due to it being a smaller sensor, as well as yeah. kind of your ISO. Yeah, and if obviously you're planning to use the same lens, focal length. Yes. Like, th then you there'll need be to a major difference. Think yeah. about that. Um, but yeah, liked it. We both yeah. thought that was a fantastic so if you're after a kind of more budget orientated similar line camera, you can't honestly go wrong with the Sony FX30. Now we had a lot of big releases this year of lots of different kit, but we also get some nice point and shoots every now and then. We do, and we actually got one this year. We've got we the did. ZV-1F. We did indeed. So it's a little bit different to the ZV-1, which is already out. It's been out for a couple couple years couple now. Couple years, yeah. It's got a zoom lens. It's got a 24 to 70 f2 to 2.8 lens. Yes. Really, really good. But if you want something that's maybe a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, mm -hmm. and definitely a little bit cheaper, then the ZV-1F yeah. is the one that fills the gap. Yeah. Almost identical in its kind of image quality. Up yeah, it was very, very similar. Similar Great. features. Similar features all, all together. Yeah. Now, if you do watch that video, we'll make sure we put the link in the description, you'll probably hear it had a great microphone and we heard something in the, yes, someone sorry. recently brought. I, I, I did, I, I've got a couple of little puppies and yes. they might have popped along for the video and I didn't realise how much they would hate watching us. Yeah, it was their kind of premiere uh, video, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, they, they did, they didn't do too well, they wanted to join in. That was the yeah, problem, right? They, they wanted did. to just join in so you can hear a little bit of barking in the background. Someone did comment and say, is, it, um, is that on the soundtrack? And I was like, Yes, <laughs> it was not. It took me ages um, to choose a trap with barking dogs. It's, so it's, it's difficult to find bit one. Bit of shaggy. That, yeah, exactly. But, um, but I think it was great. It, it was, was a, nice yeah, camera. and then you went vlogging with it as well. So, I did. Yeah. So I'm not not particularly keen on vlogging, um, and I much prefer it when the camera's smaller and yeah. it, you know, it's it's a bit more manageable, right? One, it's less work on your arm, but also it's less in your face. Mm. People sort of aren't so bothered about when you're carrying a little camera about. And I took the um, the dogs up to a big closed-in field. And I was a bit worried because we went at sunset, the sun was mm. pretty low, you know, and uh, there was a lot of dynamic range. And one of the best things I liked about the original ZV-1 is it dealt with skin tone really, really yes. well. Sony's in general especially, do. Especially but... the, 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 the auto white balance yes. of it, I think, is, is very true. Exactly. Uh, which is important. Yeah. It's very correct. But it? I could turn into the sun, you know, sort of having it, you know, holding the camera out, being able to look at the yeah. screen. And the sun was directly behind me. And you kind of have this... A little bit of flare coming yeah, through, like pretty colours. It was it was yeah. nice, right? And I think for that size of camera, I was yeah. pretty impressed. Yeah, I think knowing what you need it for and adjusting the camera to those needs yeah. is, is fantastic. And we had cameras like this come out this year, you know, ZV1F, Z30, the these sort of smaller vlogging cameras. Yeah, but we also had some really high end cameras as well. So Olympus earlier in the year bought out that OM1. Really, really good. But yeah. that wasn't the only camera we saw. No. Now, obviously, it's not Olympus now, it's OM Systems. OM Systems, which someone kept forgetting to mention it in the OM5 video. I don't know who you could mean. Uh, that's obviously not me. But uh, it's, it's a change. Someone it's else. A change. Someone else. Um, yes, they. We, we saw the OM Systems OM5. Um, so that came. It wasn't obviously the same uh, as the uh, as the OM1. It was it was a different sort of camera. Correct. Yeah. Um, but you yeah, could tell, definitely tell by the the grip and the kind of ergonomic design. There was a little bit of a change between the OM1 and the OM5. Yes. Uh, there's a definitely you could feel it, but also to do with 
what it's designed for. Again, yeah. they kind of really was you know, mentioned it in their promos about it's a storytelling camera. It's it a is. camera that you bring and it's all designed to be lightweight. So again, yeah. they, they said it was designed to work with the kind of F4 series of lenses, which are not, aren't the best, like the 2.8 series, but they're small, light and compact. So the idea is you, like, if you, I think it was right as I was saying, if you have a certain lens and a certain kit combination, it's under a kilogram, which I don't know, I don't know what full frame camera you're looking at, but none of them are going to be under a kilo no. if you put a camera and a lens together. So. I think that's really, really impressive. Really travel friendly. I mean, and the great thing about Micro Four Thirds is just because they suggest you use the F4, right? You can use whatever you want. Of you course, could, of you course. could maybe have one really fantastic prime, yeah. and you could maybe have a couple of cheap lenses that, yeah. if you're on a really muddy, rubbish day out, you could be like, well, if these get a bit knocked yeah. about, or you're going to the beach. Matter. Yes, sand exactly. Never, sand. Lens and yeah. sand never go well together, I can tell Absolutely. you that. Several good lenses I've been brewing because you've gone on the beach, and this is where that camera is designed to go with it. It doesn't have to be best of the best kind of with image quality, but any camera is better than no camera. They always say the best camera is the yeah. one that's in your hand. And, and it has this all camera the features. is never designed to leave. No, exactly. It's, it's meant to be. So if you get somewhere, you're like, wow, that's a nice waterfall, but I didn't bring all my filters because I'm on a hike. That's no problem because yeah. you've got the built in NDs. Yeah. You know, if, if you wanted to do, oh, I'm, you know, it's night, I'm camping. Oh, look at the stars. It yeah. doesn't matter. You've got that bit mode built in. So with that camera, it's very much a, don't stress about it. Don't stress about packing all your kit because I know what we're like. Well, that's that's two Way days too much. Who cares about clothes when you can be packing your camera kit? Exactly. Right? So exactly. It's it's nice. I think for a lot of people, they love photography, but they don't want the stress. And that type of camera is about exploring, Enjoy, yeah, enjoying yeah. what you've got with you. And it did do that on the day. Hundred yeah. percent. And we went to really low, really nice locations. Annoyingly, we couldn't go to that viaduct that we desperately yeah, wanted to in the video annoying. because it was closed. But that's just to do with our bad timing. To be yeah, with you. I drove we past that week... today. It was still closed. It was still closed. Still well, closed. Yeah. There so there we go then. Yeah, so. we were right in the middle. But um, uh, packed full of features, as you'd expect from a camera of this year. Uh, micro Four Thirds are great for that. Yeah. So next up, we have the Sony A7R5. Which now this was I was very excited. I with loved. This. That was a yeah. great camera build was fantastic. Okay, same in terms of sensor and stuff, same 60 megapixels. Well, they usually whatever. say, so if you, you look to how the cameras were, they usually keep the same sensor for roughly two generations. Quite so often. They, they did the same with the A7R2 to the A7R3, yeah. and then they updated it for the A7R4. So our, we weren't necessarily expecting a brand right. new sensor, but we weren't well, at least I wasn't expecting the, the actual change in the pure image quality, because yeah. the sensor is only one Part half of, of it. it. The yeah. processor and that new AI processor that they've added in, dedicated just for the autofocus, yeah. Yeah, was, it was, was... But that A7R5, I got to fly in a plane, which was really yes, fun. Yes, you did. I did go in a plane. A super fun. cub, wasn't it? It was a super cub, yeah. It was super fun. Yes. Like, did, you, did you like that? Because you said super cub. Oh, it's, it's super, super fun. fun. Super fun, no, yeah. yeah. I went, I went straight, they don't over just my, straight over my, my head. They don't just employ my reviewing capability. <laughs> but the, the camera itself, one, the quality was insane. Like, out of the plane, it, beautiful. Yeah. Annoyingly, there was a little bit of haze for parts of the flight, but when I was looking yeah, through the images, I was like, wow, I can zoom straight in. Um, yeah. But regardless of that, that was that was all great. That was amazing fun, yeah. fantastic photos, really, really exciting. But that evening, we then did the low light test. And, yes, we were out you know, quite late last in, night, in, in, a, in a nice little vintage town, like beautiful yeah. place, nice, but rubbish light, right? I knew oh, there's yeah. lampposts there, but it's orange and it's low and it's rubbish. and it's like a really old type of lamp as well. It wasn't like the new LEDs that you get, no. like fairly clean. This one oh, was no, flickering that was, that was and all over the place. out kilowatts all over the place. Yeah, man. But so good. Yeah. It was so, so good. I was really impressed. Yeah, no, looking looking back, it was a, it, it, it performed better at certain ISOs that I wasn't expecting it to. Like, you know, 12,800 in most situations yeah. is rubbish. The only camera I know that I could professionally shoot is the FX3, only because yeah. it's dual native is 12,800. Like, yeah. it's almost got zero noise to it. No. But this camera was usable. And again, you can go into Lightroom, you can go into yeah. Photoshop, you can remove it, you can make it Well, there's things usable. like Topaz, right? If oh, people yeah. Wanna, if want, people want to pay out, you know? And the A7R5, like before, as much as I love those cameras, I adore shooting in low light, so I wouldn't yeah. have one because they've always been a bit noisy for yeah. me. I just, I just, it's not for me. But that, I was like, oh, I'm mm. gonna have to change up what I personally would shoot with. Yeah. Like what I would put on my list of yeah. maybes because that worked perfectly well yeah. in really, low light. Really, it was really, really nice. Yeah. Big upgrade, even when yeah. it comes to video, which it wasn't designed to do. No. It can shoot 8K 30 frames per yeah. second, which again, puts it into the leaders of Canon EOS R5. And that's what Sony have done with the A7R5 here. They've 
given you everything you need. You can choose how to use it, but they've given you everything you yeah. need. And I, I think that's great from them. And again, it wasn't the only five. We had the yeah. OM5, we had the A7R5, R5C and then, well, well, we had the R5C, the but then we had the X-T5. X-T5 from Fuji, the third camera from Fuji in one year. And high-end cameras. High-end cameras yeah. as well. They're not like, you know, the, the, the small cameras like Sony always release new cameras. Like they've yeah. got the, the, they released a new phone as well this year. Yeah. really good. But Fuji are the kind of, well, the sleepers last year. They didn't release too many. No, they didn't. And then all of a sudden releasing three high-end new cameras, yeah. like the X-T5, which was... That was fun to use. Yeah. Yeah, that was a lovely camera to use. Yeah. I mean, I'm a massive Fuji fan. I like their medium format range and well, I like their, their APS-C like, range. Their most famous range, the XT yeah. series, has yeah. been going for almost the longest, but also by far the most popular. If you've shot on Fuji, the likelihood mm. you either you're shooting on an X-T5 yeah. or want to shoot yeah, on the X-T series. I started off with X-Pro, which I think I've already mentioned in this video, but I started off with X-Pro and X-Pro 1, X-Pro 2, mm. they were super popular, right? X-T, yeah. People liked it, but it couldn't quite keep up with the X-Pro. And then no, they brought out true. the X-Pro 3, and that took the X-Pro in like a weird tangent. Mm. And the X-T became their like go-to Fuji-styled camera. You've got to remember, the X-H's, they look like other cameras, right? They yeah. have a, PASM, a, a PASM dial and things like that. The, the grip and everything, the grip what I liked everything. about the X-T. With the X-T doesn't, no. right? It's still that classic, here's an ISO ring, here's a shutter ring, you know. You have all those dials and that manual way of working and it's lovely and they've, you know, up the megapixels a little bit, you know, it's a, the autofocus was fantastic. Yeah. It was just a really nice One big kind with. of controversial thing they did though, was they went back, with which the is screen. very rare, they went back on the screen, they which did. only a few companies and brands actually go, they revert back because usually they they will stick to their ways or double down and do it again. Yeah. But they went, ah, no. So now we've got the X-H2S, which is the video side of things with the flip out screen. X-H2 as well has got the flip out screen, but they decided to go for a tilting screen. Back. Yeah, they did. So they, they went, went back, back to, to the X-T3. And that, it was an interesting move. It's not, yeah. Because obviously when I was shooting, we went out with Mr. Whisper. That was fantastic. Yeah. You know, we did some great low light stuff. Um, when I was shooting the street stuff, I did like that tilting screen. And Fuji is classically street. It's not all everyone shoots on Fuji. That would no, be ridiculous. But I know professional wedding photographers that shoot on Fuji exactly. because they love the look. The look Again, is they've got a very, brilliant. very, their X Trans sensor is famous for it their is. colour representation. And having that tilt up screen in that situation, really good. Same with weddings. Well, actually. it keeps everything all, if you're, especially if you're doing anything that's got lines and yeah. things like that, it makes sure if you're doing architecture photography, you don't want to have wonky horizons and things like that. So allowing you to keep yeah. the kind of same horizon, tilting it up, really does, does help you out in that but situation. But we saw not just fives, so we have the X-T5, OM5, I've missed one, A7R5, uh, in that little short period. It was like two weeks, right, of uh, releases. Within two weeks, So yeah. the other thing that got released in that time was the EOS R6 Mark II. So we weren't expecting it. That is a camera Actually, I was genuinely, when they first said it to me, I was like, R6 Mark II, you 100% sure? Because we all know that, you know, for instance, the 5D series, there's around a four to five year gap yeah. in between. You know, in 2004, we got the 5D, and then in 2008, we got the 5D Mark II. So yeah. they usually have a very long period between one camera release and the other. And they have small interim periods, like for instance, they release the 5DS and the 5DSR, yeah. and there was only a two to three year gap, but they were very different cameras. And that was a prob that was the problem, right? Because originally the R5 and the R6 were released at the same, same time. time. Very similar and to that's the R10 the and the R7. Yeah, that's what caused the issue. Because realistically, based on a Canon ecosystem, you aren't, your R5 and R6 aren't going to be updated at the same time. Your R6 will be updated more quickly than your R5, but because yeah. they bought them out at the same time, everyone was like, oh, R6 II, where's the R5 II? But that's not how it's going to work. No. R5 II will take much longer. And we did expect the R6 to, to take I was longer expect, as well. I must we, say, we did the earliest, it. I was expecting it to probably be his next year. Really. Yeah, and we, I mean, we don't get any... As I've said to you guys before, we, we actually don't get insight for like at all, almost. Well, sometimes we you get know, told the day before shooting, which yes, you might have found in a know, few of them. And because we've worked in the industry, especially, you know, I've known a lot of the brands and the manufacturers for a really long time. Sometimes I'll get something like, hey, try not to be on holiday in four weekends yeah. time, you know, because 
And you'll I be like, might need you. But there'll like, be why? nothing else, you know? There'll be no other information. And we didn't even get that with this. You know, it, it This one was a complete nowhere. out of left wing and not even a few rumour sites were maybe stating it might have been another camera. And it Yeah, wasn't. we were like, what? I was yeah. like, when they were saying, I was thinking, oh, it's probably going to be maybe a lower budget RF camera, like yeah, an R100 we, Yeah, or we something. weren't sure at but all. But it, it was a really interesting one to review because, left because we weren't expecting it, right? Yeah. So we were interested to see what it could do. And... The thing for me on the R6, 100%, the biggest thing for me was that image stabilisation. Because, yeah, yeah. because to say super rating, you're getting the same, you're still getting up to eight stops. Yeah. And then for me to be able to sit, because I did a secondary test when I went to, you did, th you there's did another video coming. Seconds. Yeah, I went up to Cambridge, there's another video coming. Uh, it might be out by the time you see this, we'll link it if it is. And yeah, I could handhold it for five seconds, which I've never done. It, it was five insane, seconds. handheld, five seconds. I think there was maybe the odd bit of, you know, movement there, but it wasn't just the image stabilization though. There was a ton of different updates across the whole camera, but it they were all quite small upgrades, but it made the overall camera quite a big small, upgrade. Yeah, I think small little updates here and there will make a massive change to the yeah. overall outcome. You know, you could slap a brand new sensor in it, which is what they did. But I think the little things I think that I noticed more than a 20% bump in resolution. Things like, for instance, that small movie to video switch that was yes, found where the, the on-off button used to be. Now that's been changed over to the right-hand side. So you can dedicate, and it makes it a true hybrid. But now they're filling out that range a bit more. You've got, you can choose to go for the older EOS R. You can look at the RP if you really want something minimal to get into the range. But now you're going to have that R6 at a great price new, or yeah. as you say, our use department is going to probably see a few of them with Definitely. these other cameras coming out. You've now got the R6 II, so if you want that 24 megapixels, that's applicable. If you still want to go high-end yeah. R5, and if you're sports and you need that grip, then you've got the R3. That yeah. range is just feeling out yeah. now. And the R6 II might seem odd to some people, mm -hmm. but I think it does fill the range. I think it does bring things in. I always say, I always want more options. Because yeah. the more options you've got, the better likelihood you're going to make a better decision. Yeah. Especially when it comes to camera, it's a very personal thing. It There's is. no right camera for everybody. And that's why you've got more options out there. You end up probably with a better solution for you. So, what is your favourite camera of the year? Well, what do you mean by that? Favourite photo camera? Hybrid video. We've had so many options okay. this year. Start with photo then. What's photo. your favourite fav? Well, if you, were, shoot if if you I, were shooting, if I was shooting, I would probably say uh, one that I think I was most impressed by is the Fuji XH2. I think picking up that for the very first time yeah. and shooting a Fuji and going, this is actually amazing. Uh, yeah. That really stood out for me. And I think if I was um, to ditch all my Canon equipment that then, I shoot and all the Sony stuff that I use for work and I had to choose, I would probably go for photos. I was really impressed. And that's just, you know, someone that shoots full frame, someone's yeah. been shooting Canon for pretty much since they picked up a camera. I was really impressed by that Fuji X-H2. Yeah, and it was great for me because obviously I've always loved Fuji. Yeah, I was, re I was really rating it, right? I was yeah. really being like, you'll love the X-H2. And you, you bit, I picked it, I was a like, bit of a snob. Um, so you were like, I'm not, not sure about this. And then you shot with it for like a weekend. You're like, oh, like, this is the best. Yeah, yeah I, was, so. I was really impressed. I think it was all to do with the grip. I've always got used to Fuji's when I've been selling. Because obviously, I used to work in the Milton Keynes store. If you didn't know, you know, picking up all of those cameras, you just know. I just didn't like the grip. It was too small, yeah. and that's what I loved about the Canon when the Canon got R5 and R6 got released. I love that ergonomic design of it. I could hold it all day, and it didn't feel like a burden. And yeah, that is what made one of the biggest seller points was the design. I think of the XH2. Yeah, really strong. Yeah. What about you then? What was what was your favourite photography camera? Oh man, um, it's a really difficult one. A, this year. There's been so much out this year. I think personally, for me, for what I'd use it for, it'd have to be the A7R5. It probably helps that it was. I really enjoyed the review. It was really fun yeah. to film. Um, but did I tell you I went on the plane? But the camera itself was just oh it's just lovely when it you came back lovely. and i saw your photos firstly i was majorly jealous <laughs> firstly and secondly looking back at the photos although because it was a pre-production model we were shooting jpeg which is a big noticeable yeah, that, difference when you edit the photos yeah. when you look back and you can see like people's number plates on a car from a thousand feet yeah it's like 
it just blows you away yeah. the quality like you can zoom into 100 percent this like the, the canvas side so if you're after something that can print massive images it was that picture of portsmouth in. for me yeah. and i'd say yeah. i mean it was a bit hazy like you're not allowed to fly near Portsmouth because of the ships coming in, right? Yeah. So you're not allowed to fly. So he was like, the the guy who was um, the pilot, he, he was like, well, I have to turn off here. So I sort of waited to the last minute, just managed to shoot across. And I was like, it's going to be whatever. You could see right? people hazy. on the cruise ships. Yeah, and it you just, was... I could, oh, it's just insane. And um, I mean, regardless of that, because the A7R4 still has that amount of detail, right? Like normally I'm like, oh yeah, loads of detail. And then I start doing other things with it. I'm like, Oh, it struggles with mm. other things. But the A7R5 didn't. It was like, okay, now I'm doing continuous yeah. shots. Great. Now I'm using the new autofocus system. It's great. Now it we're just, shooting low light. It just opened and up the possibilities. Brilliant. Yeah. So, so it strong. Really so yeah, I really, I really like that camera. It was super yeah. strong for me. Really nice. Yeah. So what, so apart from photo cameras, what about hybrids? Because hybrids are coming more and more popular. Yes, most of these cameras we're talking about yeah. today are hybrids. But what is your favourite hybrid camera, would you say? If I was buying it to you, be if, a hybrid... If you had to buy a camera that shoots both photo and video yeah. at the same time, yeah. what would you choose? What would you What would you think is the, the best? Sony is strong, yep. but if I was looking at more hybrid, so I was going to probably be doing more video with it rather than being stills orientated, yes. I would be looking at either the X-H2S, yep. always makes them up, and or the R62, that they would be the two. I was gonna say R62 is would definitely that be gonna be my shout, yeah. 100%. No, I think for, for, for someone that does hybrid, says very, when people say, oh, I shoot both photo and video, that's, that's but to be a true hybrid means, like for instance, I do weddings, but I also do photo weddings and video weddings. So it's, it's you need a camera that can either, either you have two cameras, yeah. dedicated photo, dedicated video, which is where I am at the moment. So I shoot R5 for my mm -hmm. videos. They're great, obviously, photos, but I use my R, can't afford mm. two R5s. No. An R6 would bridge that gap. You can easily do both. And I think the R6 Mark II with that, and I don't know why I was so fussed with it, but the, having that dedicated photo to video switch. Yeah, you easy, love that. perfect. Also, also that razor megapixels for me. That that does make a difference to me. Yes. That with the image stabilization, the low light performance is insane on the yeah. R6. It always has been. Original R6, R6 yeah. II, low light performance, brilliant. So yeah. There is, with that raising megapixels and the change in design, yeah. it is really strong as a hybrid, yeah. but so is the X-H2S. Yeah, and with a stacked sensor at that price point, yeah. the only other stacked sensors cameras you've got is the Sony A1, yeah. and then you've got the Canon EOS R3. Yeah, well, the uh, only... OM-1 oh, and stack, OM1. but again, very different, very, very, different. very different type of camera. And the, the X-H2S, Fuji. Yeah. Sort out that naming convention. It's, do you know, since I started here, it is the only name of a of camera the H ever and the S that is... I've ever heard every single person mess up. Even people at Fuji. People came yeah. and uh, the, we had the Fuji. XSH2. Yeah, no. they, they kept saying the S like before the H. Yeah. It was it's crazy. But I've got used to XH2 and then XH2 S. S. You know, yeah. a little gap in between. Imagine if we'd said it wrong the whole time. <laughs> not really. Yes, not realised. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah, no, it, it was a fantastic camera to use. 26 megapixels. So you had a bit more there. You got a little bit over yeah. that R62. Um, but yeah, just really, really nice it's to the, use. The, the speed of the autofocus, yeah. Speed of the autofocus, continuous frame rate. Yeah. All rounder, really strong. Yeah, doesn't yeah. matter what you do, XH2S, you'll be fine. Okay, throw hybrid out the window. Just video now. Just video. Just video. Well, to be honest with you, it, I know I, what yours is going to be. It's, it's R5C. <laughs> R5C. If I if I didn't buy an R5 and I waited, I would have brought an R5C because that for me that has a dedicated cinema menu. Yeah. Because I'm getting more into you know high end production work now. Mm. I want to add a lot more kind of range to what I can offer as a as a content creator, but also filmmaker. Yeah. R5 is great. But those limitations when it comes to, like for instance, overheating in, in a sunny condition. If I go to yeah. Death Valley, it's not, not it's not terrible. It, like don't get us oh, wrong. No, it's, it's not like when it first came out. Like that firmware update fixed all that. Rubbish. Yeah, but if you are, it, it, if you're in Death Valley, it, it's a problem. It, or even for instance, England when it's forty degrees outside, well, like yeah, it was for like absolutely. two times this year. Like if you did a wedding that day, which I did, regretted it massively, but. It did overheat. Yeah. And what am I going to say to the bride and groom when I say, oh, sorry, I can't do the confetti shot. Give it 20 minutes yeah. for my camera to hit. Um, and, and that's not 
a down point of the R5. No. It's just, you would expect that from most cameras in that oh, situation. Oh, it doesn't matter what camera I had, unless it was fan cooled, like for instance, like the, the, R5C. the Sony AFX3, yeah. or for instance, the Canon R5C. And that's what it gives you. It gives yeah. you more reliability. It's not going to offer you better image quality. It's not going to offer you anything more than reliability. And that's what it, it, it's great yeah. for. It's, it's Shooting in different environments. And and that's what I loved about the R5C, yeah. I think. It, sure, it wasn't perfect. There was a few things I wish it had. Yeah. But for a dedicated video camera... Yeah, it was strong. It was a yeah. really strong offering. For me, it's the... It would be the FX30. Like, I... Oh, I I, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I yeah. love... Because I shoot, oh, I shoot between so many different cameras, but most of the time I shoot between some Fuji kit, some, uh, I, I love Nikon Z9, so whenever I can get my hands on that, I do have a little play, but I don't own one. I've got quite a bit of Canon and quite a bit of Sony, and I tend to shoot a bit more video on my Sony and a bit more stills on my Canon. Yeah. Now, that changes depending on what I'm doing that day, but like that's how I generally do it and the fx30 for me just strengthened that offering yeah it just like encapsulates it everything fun you want. to use yeah. it was great offered everything yeah. i needed and for the price point what you get was that's great. what was shocked me to be honest with the 4k 120 at that price point is unheard of in a, have, in a proper video body yeah in a proper and uh, like you could take that on set and you would get the look of an fx3 for yeah. almost half the price yeah and it's just, I can't emphasize enough how good that camera is value for money wise. Value for money, Sure, absolutely. there are better things out there, but value for money. Exactly. Like I was saying, if you get the right deal at the right time, you maybe have a look on my website, mm. you might be able to get two FX30s yeah. for the price of one it, FX3. It, it's and it's insane. just like two, it, two camera angles add so much more dynamic it really to, does. than just one camera. It does. And there's, you know, people talk about B cams all the time. You know, yeah. people say anything that's like not quite the flagship, they're like, you use it as a B cam. You can't always use stuff as a B cam just because it's less, right? Yeah. And it offers video. That's not how it works. But with the FX30, you genuinely can because it has the same color profile. Yeah. And it, they, they've made it so that it can be genuinely used as a B cam or it can be your main camera. Yeah. It absolutely can be. You can have a whole fleet of FX30s. Yeah. Just having all that camera angles, focusing on different things. Or or you can push yourself, right? You can you can have your FX6 or your FX9. And then when your mates say, do a bit of video today for me, and you don't want to take your FX6 or your FX9, then you can take your FX30. Instead of buying another expensive camera, instead of buying another FX3, yeah. if you're already in that ecosystem of, of yeah. the high-end cine line from Sony, then you can get an FX30 and still be covered. Yeah. Like, I think that's a great, great feature. And I think it works the other way around as well. If you're a beginner and you're wanting to get into Cinema yes, Line absolutely. and you've got an easier price point, the FX3 is a massive jump up. It's probably it is, one of the most expensive kind of full frame cameras that you, you could buy for what it does. Yeah. And the FX30 comes in at a perfect kind of yeah. stepping stone to get you from point A mm. to point B. So you don't have to jump straight to an FX6 or straight to an FX9. You've got these little jumps that you can make throughout your kind of production. So your your quality will go up as yeah. your gear progresses. So there's not a massive jump up. You haven't got a four or five grand to get the next camera. It's yeah. it's it's more affordable. So year in review, cameras. Yeah, quite a long 20, one this year. 22. But there was a lot in it. There's a lot to do, yeah. yeah. Huge amount of cameras. Might have only been here for half of the year for Wex, but I must say it felt like a full yeah. year with the amount of releases at the end. And I forced you to watch all the videos, of course. so it's fine. Yeah. Now, we'd love to know what your favorite videos, cameras of the year were. So make sure you pop them in the comments below. Let us know some of your favorites, maybe the ones you weren't so keen on, what you would have liked to see, and what you would like to see coming up next year. I've got a few things in mind. There's a few things I'd definitely like to see. Yes. I'm sure you're the same. Well, the rumor mills are always spinning. Uh, they always they stuff are, coming out. yeah. They're normally always wrong, but they are, <laughs> they're always yes. spinning until you get close to it. They're, they're, they're wrong until they're right. I like, I like their right. ideas, but hey, you know. Yeah. I mean, there, there's something obviously everyone wants to see. I don't even know if it's coming. For me, it's the R1. R1X or whatever it is. R1A, whatever the, it is, the, the Canon, whatever they're yeah. assuming it. Yeah, That's, we're assuming. Uh, when, when that comes out, it's going to change the world. There's but. no. There, there's this misconception, right, that there's the R3 and the Z9 and they're the same thing. They're not. 
they're not the same thing. They're, they're similar, but they're, but they're not, not. The R3 is 20 megapixels, right? It's meant to be fast and quick and press and wild and sport. The Z9, that megapixel range with all of that yeah. other technology, right? That's a, that's a beast. But the only people I can we blame is Canon because they haven't released it yet and Sony have released it, Nikon have released yep, it. Got the it's A1. just Canon yeah. that we're waiting for. So no wonder people are it, thinking it is because... Something must, it must be coming at some point, right? Yes. But we genuinely have nothing on it. No. You know, and that's why the R6 II was a surprise. I think that's what everyone was expecting. Yeah. We talked to Canon, we're like, oh, when's the R1X? And they're like, oh. Yeah, they're nothing. So they're very good, I must yeah, say. They're the, very good at keeping know, their... But the R6 II, that is what we thought. That we, we were we, like, we new genuinely camera, thought new that. Canon camera, must be that. Must be. But yeah, nothing. So that, for me, that is my wish for Christmas, wish for next year. Yeah. I want to see that. I want to see what it's going to offer. I'm yeah. excited. They, they, they must be doing something. Yeah, they, they must be. They can't not have a matched flagship for mirrorless, Against 2023 Nikon. is going to be the year of the Canon flagship, I think. Oh, it's it has to got be. to be. It's got to be. I'm, I'm really hoping. So, yeah, let us know if you've got any thoughts on that. As I say, pop them in the comments. Now, everything we've spoken about today, we've got videos on all of these. We've we'll done link it all loads in the of description. Reviews. So, description, our description has been long for this video. Yeah, definitely. Check it out. There's going to be tons of stuff in there. And hopefully, you can have a watch of the ones that maybe appeal to you. Now, if you need any help, of course, we're always here. You can pop any questions you have down in those comments. You can talk to us on socials. You can give us a call. You can send us emails, whatever it is you need. And visit of course, the stores. Visit, visit the, the stores, stores. of we've course. More, we've got a new store coming out very soon. Yeah, we'll make so sure to mention that on our website. Make sure so. to do all of those things. But also, check out some of the product pages for these things because we try and get a load of info on there for you so that you can go through the spec list, compare, have a look at those if there's anything you want to know. But for now, a massive, massive thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us in 2022. And we can't wait to review more cameras in 2023.